You know, there's a very popular business adage that says, what gets measured gets done. And I think in my experience, that's probably true. My concern and our concern here at Cult is that most businesses are actually measuring the wrong things. Therefore, by almost default, they're doing the wrong things. And so our goal is to get us to focus on different types of metrics. Therefore, our behavior will change. I'll give you just a, a few examples. Uh, you know, one of the, probably the most popular uh, metrics in marketing is brand awareness. And everybody's trying to increase their brand awareness. And the most popular tool in their toolbox to do that is buying impressions. Um, my, my concern is that we end up buying a lot of impressions, but we don't end up actually making very many good impressions. Our, our brand's awareness can be very, very high, but that actually correlates very low to things like trial and usage. Uh, when we emphasize brand awareness metrics, we tend to grossly overinvest in mass media. We spend something like uh, $200 billion annually just in North America chasing this elusive metric of awareness, believing it to be the uh, end all be all, and it's simply not. There's very little correlation between brands that are popular versus those that are beloved and highly frequented and enjoy the highest levels of trial and usage. Uh, another very popular metric would be acquisition, new customer acquisition. Uh, again, acquisition metrics are inferior to other types of metrics that are more predictive of success. Of course, getting new customers is fantastic, but when you overemphasize new customer acquisition metrics, it results in really lousy new customers to file. Customers that do not come back and spend more, do not buy without need for stimuli, customers that do not pay a premium price point, and certainly customers that don't refer. And so the goal isn't just to get more customers, the goal is to make more money. And there's more effective ways to do that than just chasing new customers. And unfortunately, the way most brands get new customers on file is through bribery through excessive markdowns. And there's many brands that are selling way too much product on discount in this false belief that if I can get you in the store once, you're going to come back again and again. Another metric that comes to mind is customer satisfaction, or it's, uh, it's evolved state of net promoter score. Again, having satisfied customers are great, but net promoter score metrics have shown very little correlation between uh, changes in net promoter score and changes in revenue. So as net promoter scores go up or down, we do not see the same correlated trend in sales and certainly not in profitability. So we've got to find a different way to think about what is it that we're doing with our discretionary marketing dollars to improve the ways that the marketplaces think about us, what they believe, and certainly how they behave. And we believe at Colt that that metric is audience engagement scoring. Everybody wants more engaged audiences. Those audiences can be prospects, people that currently have not selected you. They can be customers, people that have transacted with you, certainly in the last 12 months. But they can also be employees and staff or franchisees or dealers or other partners, other audiences that are really critical to your success. The more we can boost their engagement, the more we will dial up their brand attachment, which is a metric that refers to their emotional connection with the brand. And the research is very clear that, particularly here in North America, over 70% of decisions are made on an emotional basis, not a rational one, which should cause us all to rethink the features and benefit uh, marketing communications that's so uh, prevalent uh, today in the marketplace. Um, we also want to look at ways to dial up advocacy. The ultimate goal of any marketing department should not be awareness or acquisition. It should be advocacy because if you can get audiences to love you enough to want to refer you to others, you're not only going to benefit from a hyper engaged person who's shopping more, but now you have this non-commissioned sales force of advocates that are out there uh, working on your behalf. Word of mouth has always been and will always be the best form of marketing. So how to measure audience engagement scores is actually a video for another day, but I wanted to expose it to you for the hopes that you would say, yes, I would like to learn more about engagement and how to improve it. We've sort of bucketed all of this into three particular work streams, very discreet to-dos with discrete deliverables and discrete costs associated with them. The first work stream we've labeled believe. 
Um, there are many brands that just need to believe that there's a better way. They need to be exposed to different types of playbooks. They need to be exposed to different types of KPIs that would actually result in a different trajectory for both their business and their audience engagement. So believe engagements from Colt involve teaching. Teaching can be done in one hour speeches or in two day executive workshops or in four week deep dives where we work with a very select group of brand leaders to expose them to 10 specific principles, proven cult brand principles that are employed by the most beloved brands on the planet. Brands that we bring to a, a, an event held every year called The Gathering in uh, Banff, Alberta, where these brand leaders themselves stand on stage and expose us to the things that they have done that has resulted in above average engagement. Uh, believe engagements from cult range from anywhere from five thousand to fifty thousand dollars like I said they're anywhere from half a day to uh, to four weeks worth of work and you leave with a deliverable that can be socialized throughout your organization can be socialized throughout your dealer network or throughout your franchisee base that allows everybody to get on the same page it will expose you to principles that you then can take and work together as an in-house team work with your agency partners to try to formulate new tactics tactics, new strategies that will hopefully result in whole new levels of engagement. The second work stream we call behave. This is for people that want to do more than just believe. This is for people that want to begin to test, to try and to experiment. Behave engagements typically involve a very discreet business objective over a very defined period of time, usually three to six months. Behave engagements typically involve the introduction of a new product or service, maybe the entering of a new market or the pursuit of a new type of customer. So when a, a new product, let's say, is being launched, we can take a behave-like strategy and come in and not distract what the rest of the organization is doing in terms of catering to the core customer or the core product and service and take this ancillary new service or product offering and experiment with a whole different playbook. Try all different types of non-traditional go-to-market strategies. Uh, try to indoctrinate the sales force or the call center or the frontline associate in a different way to try to achieve a different result. Behave engagements uh, range anywhere from $50,000 to $250,000, depending on the length of time and the size of the footprint in which we have to uh, affect, um, you know, doing something in a local city versus doing something on a global scale. But they provide tremendous proof points. They're essentially pilot programs for a whole new philosophy and a whole new paradigm about how brands can go to market. The third bucket is called Become and it is admittedly the most invasive. Uh, we've never done a Become project that wasn't initiated from the CEO himself or herself. Become projects say, I already believe in new principles and I know that our organization needs to change and I've already tested and I've behaved in a different way and I've enjoyed the results, so now I'm ready for holistic change. And Become engagements are invasive. We go into organizations and we reassess personnel. Uh, people lose their jobs and people get new jobs. We move people around the organization uh, better based on their skill sets and competencies and capabilities. It involves a whole new set of processes. Oftentimes, you know, they talk about 90% uh, of success is execution, not the strategy, and yet we spend uh, all of our time and energy on strategies, not figuring out how to get them done. Well, not in Become Projects. Become Projects means we come in and, and reevaluate, are you really optimized for success? Do you have the right processes? Do you have the right infrastructure? Do you have the right technology? Do you have the right people? Do you have the right paradigms that are governing the organization? What sort of sacred cows need to be slaughtered? What sort of assumptions need to be killed? What sort of new beliefs need to be socialized and indoctrinated so that the entire organization can understand we're going in a new direction? We're no longer going to be the same, either because you're an unhealthy brand, frequently it's because you've gotten addicted to some bad behaviors,
or maybe um, there's just a brand new opportunity that you have to capitalize on and you know that what got you to here is not going to be the same that what got you to here. So become engagements last anywhere from 12 to 24 months. They cost anywhere between a million and two million dollars and it's our opportunity not to get you addicted to us. We want to be able to come in, expose you to these principles, assist you through the transitionary period and then get out of your way when you've become a far healthier uh, organization that's far more capable of embracing these types of principles. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, admittedly, as an engagement agency, some of our products and services are non-traditional compared to what other marketing consultancies and certainly what other ad agencies might offer. But I hope that if you uh, understand the principles of why would you want to believe or what might you want to behave or are you at a position in, at your life cycle of your company to decide now's the time to become something different, then I think that my team and I could add some value to your journey. Thank you for listening.